Here are a few more problems on experimental design. Um, I'll do one per video, but they it's kind of three that go together. Uh, this is from part three review of Bach, Bellman, and DeVoe. Uh, 23 is called Tips. So two waiters determined randomly whether or not to give candy to 92 dining parties. They recorded the sizes of the tips. Parties getting candy tipped an average of 17.8% and with no candy, 15.1%. The idea, uh, this is a, a brief synopsis of the, the problem description. The idea is to figure out if giving candy influences the tip. Okay. So first of all, is it an experiment or an observational study? Well, notice that um, we're determining randomly whether to give one treatment or another. We're not just saying, okay, let's look at the records of our tips and, and uh, see what happened already. So this is definitely a randomized controlled experiment. The control is the fact that they had these two different treatments. Um, it's, okay, here we go. Um, and they looked at the difference between those and they randomized, which is crucial. Okay, is it reasonable to conclude that candy caused the guests to tip more? Well, um, at first glance it looks pretty good. It's a randomized controlled experiment. We seem to have a significant difference here. That's what C is about. Um, we'll, we'll investigate that, but let's assume for a second that this difference is significant. It certainly seems pretty significant. Um, and what could go wrong here? Well, the only thing um, that's sort of uh, an obvious thing that could go wrong is in terms of when the decision, when this randomization happened, okay? And they're not telling us when they actually determined the uh, whether to give candy to a dining party. So if the, um, the choice was made before serving the party, then that could have influenced um, the way the the waiter interacted. If you already knew you were gonna give candy and then you were maybe expecting a higher tip, you might actually give them better service, perhaps, or you might give them worse service. I don't know. It's not hard. It's not obvious what the um, the influence would be, but there could be some uh, significant subconscious influence. Okay. Um, if the choice instead was made right before giving the bill with the candy or no, then it's basically better blinded, okay, and more trustworthy. So it's really the the significant issue here is that it seems like it's a it's a place where you it's easy to do pretty good blinding, but they're not telling us clearly whether it was well blinded or not. Okay. Um, and that would be single blinding, blinding on the side of the experimental process, not necessarily on the, the um, analysis or the um, evaluation of the results. Okay, so um, let's look at C. The researcher, the researcher said that the difference was statistically significant. Okay, um, by the way, this was 90, yeah, 92 dining parties. We're going to be able to figure out how to make this determina determination on our own pretty soon once we study a little more probability. Um, given this sample size and this difference in the numbers, we are going to be able to, to predict whether that really is statistically significant. But we do need to know first what that means. Okay, um, It means that the difference, the observed difference, was very unlikely, never impossible, but very unlikely to be just due to random variation. We would not expect, um, even if there were no influence on the can of the candy, we would not expect these numbers to be the same. So, for example, if you reran the experiment and you looked at the no candy number, we would not expect that to be exactly 15.1%. There's always going to be random variation, and the question is, how um, can we be sure that this 17.8% wasn't just a blip? If you did, if this was say one, you just had just two dining parties total. And one of them got no candy, gave, tipped 15.1%, and the other one tipped 17.8%. It'd be very hard. It'd be impossible to say. Oh, maybe they were just generous. Maybe they just happened to be more bit, bit higher tippers. And so you've got to have a decently large sample size to make to know that this is a, a statistically significant difference. Another issue about significance, let me mention, that goes a little bit beyond this problem, is uh, can we say it's really sort of operationally significant? This isn't something that's discussed in the book too much, but it's really important. Do we care? 
So suppose that um, you had an enormous sample size, maybe thousands of dining parties. You replicated this experiment a lot. So you could make a statistically significant determination of a very subtle effect. Suppose this was actually 15.2%. Um, usually that'd be very hard to make, to be really sure that's not a random fluctuation. But if you have a large, large sample size, you might be able to say, no, I, I detected a little bit of, of an effect here. Would you care? Would you, if you were a waiter, would you actually go to the trouble to give candy given that there's a tiny increase, meaningful, significant, but tiny increase. Probably not, okay? As it is, it was really 17.8%. That could be a lot of money. Uh, it's 2.7% extra uh, of the, 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 um, the bill, and you're making a lot of your money on tips, and so that's going to be operationally significant. Yes, in this case. Okay, but they're different things. You can have a tiny but statistically significant difference if you've got a really large sample and a good study, but you might not really care. Okay, I'll save the other two problems for our next videos.